In every discovery, there is trial and there is error. There is experimentation and there is failure. And sometimes we're just plain wrong. Even the best discoveries come from an idea that's really spaced out. What happens when we go for long voyages in space? Just you and a few other astronauts alone in space. You mean out in space? It gets lonely up in space. Whoa, I never thought of that. Oh, I thought about it. In fact, I think about it a lot. All the time, actually. What? I just thought about it. Oh, yeah, it happened again. Is it even possible to have sex in space? There was a rampant rumor running all over the scientific communities that NASA was experimenting with SEX in SPACE. French astronomer Pierre Collaire wrote in his book, The Final Mission, that NASA conducted secret experiments involving sexual positions in microgravity in 1996. According to the Bureau, NASA has never performed experiments in human trials, or at least if they have, they ain't selling. The experiments are urban legend, but now that we are seriously considering the long-term space voyage, scientists are taking the question seriously. In 2002, there was a workshop with big-name scientists from all over the globe called Does Sex Matter? The study was primarily concerned with the gender component of sex, as in male-female differences, but also focused on sexual health issues like glandular and hormone production, storing egg cells in spermatozoa as a means of ensuring that radiation or space anomalies don't rob someone of their opportunity to reproduce. It's important for our astronauts, but also in an age where you can buy a ticket on a space shuttle. Can vacations in space be far behind? An orbiting hotel chain is currently being developed to provide a unique experience for wealthy travelers. The company is counting on romantic allure to boost its recreational sales. It's a natural question and a normal part of human function, especially if we're gonna somehow make space colonies work. It's critical, actually. I mean, what happens when we get out there? Someone's going to have to make some space babies. Even trying to kiss someone in microgravity is going to be a chore because you can't always stay in one place. The best way to cuddle with your interstellar loved one is to be connected to the wall or surface somehow. So you don't float away? Not only that, but being in space may also inhibit the flow of important things. You know. Scientists aren't sure if everyone will have a fully realized moment in space. Is that a nice way of saying it? Uh, yeah. That's because the blood pressure is different at different points of gravity. Your body has evolved to conditions on Earth, so when you get up in space, um, let's just say to the place down low, the blood may not flow. So it's possible a man would have a difficult time maintaining his physical arousal. Wait, it gets more complicated. When astronauts exercise in microgravity, sweat tends to congregate all around the body, and there's no natural convection for heat to transfer. So your temperature would rise more than it might in other environments, making intimate moments hotter, stickier, and potentially leaving pools of sweat in sheets around your body. Oh yeah, your first romantic night in space, you can't even touch the person you're with because she's floating way across the room and you are wearing your perspiration which pulls around your body like a literal sweatsuit and just hangs there. Oh my god, I am so turned on right now. Maybe NASA ain't talking, but somebody better figure this out. It's gonna be a long voyage. And what about the future of the human race? I mean, are we gonna be able to have babies in outer space? If and when that happens, we'll definitely be able to call that Space Oh!